follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. Go not go with me. Still I will follow. Jesus is the healer. A little more oil in my lamp, keep it burning. A little more oil in my lamp, I pray. A little more oil in my lamp, keep it burning. Hallelujah. Keep it burning till the break of day. A little more oil in my lamp, keep it burning. Hallelujah. In my lamp, I pray. A little more oil in my lamp. Sing Hosanna. 
Jesus, you're all I need. Jesus, you're all I need. Jesus, you're all we need. Jesus, you're all we need. Bless the Lord. Amen. So, moving on to chapter 2. Amen. Brother, Brother Matthew, are you coming? Yes. Yes. Thank you, Pastor Matthew. Thank you, sir. Lord bless our study. Yes, Lord. Teach us, lead us, guide us, fill us with your Amen and amen. amen. So, if you know the author of a letter, you understand it better. Like, if you were to get an unsigned letter from me and Kathy, you would know, oh, that's Kathy. It's intelligent. The capitalization's right, the punctuation's right. Um, if you got it from me, it would be like, oh, that's from Pastor Matt. So, because you know us, you would know the difference in our writings. I'm going to introduce you tonight, actually the book's going to introduce you tonight, to uh, a guy named Matthew. So, who wrote the scriptures? It's a trick question, be careful. <laughs> The Holy Spirit wrote the scriptures. The Holy Spirit is the same. He's never changed. He's always been the Holy Spirit. And he has inspired human beings to write the scriptures. If you read Matthew and Luke, would you say that they are written by the same hand? No. No. Wait a second. The same Holy Spirit writes through two people actually writes through dozens of people, and they're not the same. Why are they not the same? I got hands popping all over the place. I, I heard one over here. They're directed towards different groups of people. That's right. So different people will understand it. That's right. Paulie. Well, I would say, too, there was... With the different writers of the gospel, there's a different flavor to it because of their own personalities, even though the Holy Spirit directed everything they wrote. Isn't that awesome? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It doesn't sound robotic. Mm -hmm. These are different yeah. folks with different backgrounds, different styles, different education, different economics, and the same spirit. Mm -hmm. yeah. that, is just, that just blows me away. It is so, so cool. We have uh, four biological children, and we homeschool them all on identical situations, and they are radically different. Mm -hmm. Now, they have their own language. Because they've all watched uh, movies together, they start to quote a line from a movie, and all four of them laugh because they know, they know what the rest of that quote is because they have the same background. Mm -hmm. So, let's, we're going to talk about the reason for these first two chapters in this course is that we would know more about the author so that we would see the things through the light of knowing the author more better, mm -hmm. much more better. Yeah. See, that would be a Matt, and I would know that was Matt and not Kathy, because she would never say more better or much more better. So let's talk about Luke 5. 27 to 29, please. Somebody read it out loud. After this, Jesus went out and saw a tax collector by the name of Levi, sitting at his tax booth. Follow me, Jesus said to him. 28, please. Oops, sorry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Levi got up, left everything, and followed him. Yeah. <laughs> then Levi held a great banquet for, the Jesus, for Jesus at his house. And a large crowd of tax collectors and others were eating with them. <clears throat> but the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, who belonged to their sect, complained to his, his disciples, 
Why do you eat and drink with tax collectors and sinners? Jesus answered them, it is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. Okay, good job. So, Matthew and Levi are two names for the same guy. The young gentleman sitting on my right is Todd Jr. But I only know you as TJ. I've never called you anything but TJ. I can't remember how, what, however many years. So, you would think there's two names. There's not two names. I mean, there's not two people. There's just two names for the same. And some of you have, um, some of you have pet names. Uh, my daughter Becky is Peanut. Uh, I won't tell you about the names for my other kids, but <laughs> she's been Peanut for forever since she was a Peanut. Uh, she's now not a Peanut. She's a grown woman and good ministry in her life. So let's go back to twenty-seven. Five twenty-seven, please. <clears throat> so after something happened, Jesus went out and saw a tax collector. So what do we know about tax collectors? In, 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 today, or in today's world or back then? Back then. They were rip-offs. Okay. How did a tax collector make his money? By collecting extra money. By collecting extra money. And who was he collecting money for? Rome. And what were the Romans' relationship to the Jews? Oppressors. Oppressors. So, you decide that for your occupation, you're going to be a tax collector. How does that affect how, you're, how you are viewed? Not very good. <laughs> Not very good. That would be a way understatement. You're going to take my money, my hard-earned money, my hard-earned income, and give it to the Romans, and then you're going to skim off the top of that, not off the top of that, but above the top of that, for your own affluence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You could see that this would be a not very popular position. You get rich doing this, but everybody in town hates you. Mm -hmm. Even your family... Like, why did you do this? Why did you do this? And, and when the, the taxes were collected for the Roman government, there was most likely a large Roman guard there. And if you said, I don't want to pay taxes, bad. <laughs> He's got this sword. And uh, so, so Matthew goes up to this tax office and says, what does Matthew say? Oh, Jesus said. Jesus said. Jesus said, follow me. Follow me. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus said, follow. Walks into the tax office, says, follow me. Mm -hmm. yeah. 28. And he got up and left everything and followed him. Got up, locked the door. We're out of here. Do you understand how radical that is? The Lord Jesus says, come follow me. He locks up this tax office and walks away. Next verse. Then Levi had a great banquet for Jesus at his house. So obviously, he had been saving up. <laughs> <laughs> And a large crowd of tax collectors, and probably whoever would be friends with them would be people who... Yeah, yeah. You know, if you're a tax collector, yeah. your friend circle yeah. is entirely tax collectors. Yeah, it seems that way. Yeah. Yeah. Your friend circle might include the guard that's guarding you, <laughs> but there's no... I mean, hey, how many friends you got? Well... 27, we're all tax collectors or whatever it is. It's not hundreds, it's not thousands, it's... So what do we find out about Matthew, a.k.a. Levi, in this passage? There's probably six things that you can tell me about him from this passage. He's so... Coming back to the ones before, the verse before this one, I mean, he knows he's hated. Mm -hmm. He absolutely knows he's hated. And here is a Jewish rabbi coming up, who does miracles by the way, mm -hmm. and he's probably heard about that, and he comes up and says follow me 
I would be in shock. It's like, is there someone standing behind me that he's talking to? Because you're the scum of the earth, and he's calling the scum of the earth to follow him. That's right. Mm -hmm. So what do we find out about Levi, a.k.a. Matthew? Todd. We have a banquet. What kind of we banquet? Invited all his, he invited all sinners, all downtrodden, all people that was uh, no good reputation. And Jesus was the head chief of it, so he knew that they were going to come to a realization of who he was. Perfect. In fact, it's a great banquet. Amen. <laughs> Now, how many people in your houses can, can function a great banquet? My family could have. We had, we had 40 seats in our uh, bed and breakfast. We could have functioned 40 people. But how many, what's the most people you've had in your house over to eat? Pastor? Well, at Christmas, we probably have 40. Okay. But, but that would, there would be no tables. <laughs> there you go. So, so there's a great banquet of all of these outcast people showing up at Matthew's house, Levi's house, for, and he's not just feeding these people. Why is, why is Matthew throwing this banquet? Because he's going to follow Christ. He doesn't need that stuff anymore. That's right, and he wants all of these mm -hmm. to hear the gospel. To meet Jesus. Mm -hmm. He meets Jesus, he follows Jesus, lays aside everything, and says, Hey, everybody I know, come over to my house and meet Jesus. Isn't that cool? That's very cool. Amen. Amen. He'd already had a change of heart. That's right. Oh, radical change of heart. Yes. He follows Jesus, has a radical, and he wants everybody he knows to know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let's let's see where else we we talk about uh, Matthew mm -hmm. six fifteen please. And Jesus picks his disciples Matthew, Matthew. Thomas, James, mm -hmm. the son of Alphaeus. Mm -hmm. Now I want you to notice here's something I never saw before. Matthew is also the son of Alphaeus. James is also the son of Alphaeus. That makes them brothers. Well, brothers. We've got a lot of brothers in there. Yeah. And we've got a lot of brothers in the, in the 12. Um, so we have, I never saw that before, that, that Matthew had a brother. Now, the Lord Jesus calls Matthew, the tax collector, and his brother, who is not a tax collector and may even be a zealot, and the zealots hated Rome and wanted to do anything in their power violently to overthrow Rome. I mean, talk about family troubles. I don't know for sure that, that uh, I know that the other Simon is a zealot, but I don't know. But anyway, the commentator said it was. So here we find out that Matthew had a brother, and Jesus called this set of brothers. How cool is that? Mm -hmm. So he calls two other set of brothers that we know about. And let's try Acts 113. <laughs> when they arrived, they went upstairs to the room where they were staying. Those present were Peter, John, James, Andrew, and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew. <laughs> James, the son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. So this is right before Pentecost. Who's there? Everybody. <laughs> All the other guys and Matthew. Matthew. And we don't, we don't hear from him again in the rest of the scriptures. But his ministry after this, the church historians tell us, Included out to the Greeks and down to the Ethiopians, and then mm -hmm. he died a martyr's death. Mm -hmm. My friend Matthew. Mm -hmm. So, what, what, em, what emphasis does Matthew have in his writings? It was the original question I should have asked. Why do we have four Gospels? 
because they're all writing to different sets of people. Yeah. They're all writing to different sets of people. Yeah. That's right. What else? Why else do we have four gospels? Four witnesses. Pastor. So that God's light could shine through four different kinds of people. That's right. Four sometimes radically different kinds of people yeah. to put that. Different points of view. Yeah. Say it louder. Different points of view. Different points of view. Yeah. That's right. Um, that's Michael. It, it, um, it makes it so you can't say there's um, collusion, I guess you'd call it. <laughs> there you go. Like, like if there's four different people telling a story, it's all going to be a little bit different through four different eyes. That's right. If it's all exactly the same, you know they're lying. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> I like I like the fact that they have two different uh, genealogies. Yes. Um, you're a couple chapters ahead of us right now. <laughs> so we have... This part's weird. Um, I... I have defended the gospel for decades. Mm -hmm. I have defended the authority of the scriptures numerous times. Mm -hmm. I have never had to defend the authorship of Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John. Never had to. Nobody ever said, well, Matthew didn't write Matthew. Yes, Matthew wrote Matthew. If I asked you who wrote Matthew, you'd say Matthew and you'd be smart. If I asked you... Why would you have to defend the gospel? I don't believe the gospel because it's not true, somebody says, and it says, and I say, I love the prophecies of the Bible. I love how Jesus is spoken about hundreds of years before. So I can defend the authority of the scriptures because the scriptures defend themselves. And Jesus himself said, and so that they understand. You see, they got a glib answer that said, you can't believe the scriptures is written by men. And I say, it was written by God Almighty because of the prophecies and because of the accuracy and because of... And, and it just, it undercuts... They've, they've got this one thought that says you don't believe the scriptures because... Saying, right, for like new people coming, if we say you have to defend the gospel, and the gospel don't need to defend them, and we tell them that, it's going to be taken the wrong way. And if they're bathed in the word, that's, that's, a, that's like a, a thing that they shouldn't be doing. And we are taught that not defend the gospel doesn't have to be defended. Just stand and be still. You know what God, God do what you have to do. So yep. if we have to defend it, then we're always going to defend it. And I don't think that's right. I'm not trying to question what you're doing. But I'm saying to say we have to defend the gospel, I think it's wrong. Okay. I, I understand that uh, argument, and I, and I can't disagree with it. At the same time, what is... What is what is necessary in a conversation to talk about Christ? And sometimes they have this glib answer that just protects them from even thinking about the gospel. Well, I get this glib answer. It was written by men. It's a no. way to get off the subject. That's right. And I want to bring them right back to Jesus loves you. This I know, for the Bible tells me so. That's why you say, where your testimony in the blood of the Lamb? Yeah. Boom, that takes away all the argument about defending the gospel. Because this is what Jesus did, and this is what Jesus is doing now. And that's, that's all that's important. And it's, a, it's the evidence. Amen. It's the evidence that, that declares God's glory. Yes. Great. Right. Yeah. Yes. That's, so, so Jesus died in the 30s. Mm -hmm. And the Gospels were compiled years later. Um, Matthew probably between 60 and 69. So, so we ask, why is there a gap between them? And the answer is, I'm not real sure. I'm pretty sure that Matthew took notes along the way because he was a tax collector and it was his job to keep track of stuff. Um, so, and he may have gone to, to Mark to get reinforcement on these. Remember these guys um, ministered together and cared about each other together. So, if you were talking about who the Gospel of Matthew was written to, and it's written to whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord. Mm -hmm. But what is its primary influence? Mm -hmm. The yeah. primary influence? Go ahead. For me, of course, it's just... Uh, for me, of course, it would be to... Because it has so much 
Jewish scripture and Jewish background and Jewish, yes. I would say that it was the Jews. The Jews were the first right. to come into the kingdom. That's right. The first 150 years or so of, uh, of Christianity. Yes. Um, and so it was very important then, but now it's important to us because it also, in so doing, he had to prove that this was the fulfillment of prophecy from back then. That's right. And so he would pull in all this prophecy from the Old Testament, and uh, it would it would be more proof for for the let's say the religious believing public right. evidence that Jesus was the Messiah. That That's right. Was. That's, that's right. So, so what, is, what were the Jews crying out for? Remember, we don't have written scriptures for 400 years. Mm -hmm. That's the Old Testament. And then we have the New Testament showing up. And the New Testament leads with Matthew, who has very Jewish characteristics. Mm -hmm. he, he, used, he quotes the Old Testament more than anybody. Mm -hmm. Now, if I was to say, I went to the Cape for the weekend, I would assume that you knew what the Cape was. But if I were to say, I went to the Cape, you know, the place that pilgrims really landed, it's a tourist trap, gazillions of people show up here in the summer, you would, my assumption would be that you don't know what the Cape is, right? So if, if somebody describes something, then you may not, the, it assumes the audience might not know what it is. Like, most of us don't have a Jewish culture, and most of us might not know what Passover is, per se, unless we have the, the training about it. So, if I was to talk about Passover, I would give you more of a definition of what Passover is than if um, two, two people with Jewish backgrounds were talking, they wouldn't need the background. So. Um, more than any other gospel writer, synoptic gospel, Matthew quotes from the Old Testament prophets. Matthew frequently uses phrases like the holy city, the holy place, and the son of David. These, these would appeal to the Jewish mindset. The Jews are looking for a Messiah, and Matthew is laying out a Messiah that the Jews can love, that the Jews can honor, that the Jews can respect. Matthew refers to the Matthew refers often to the fulfillment of Old Testament prophecy. Matthew does not explain comments he makes in reference to Jewish acts and practices. This implies his recipients have a knowledge. Matthew emphasizes that Jesus did not come to destroy but fulfill the law. That would appeal also to the Jewish mind. Matthew repeatedly condemns Jewish leaders for their evil way. Gentiles would not be interested in such an emphasis. And throughout the Gospel account, Matthew answers the questions the Jews were prone to ask. So, can you read Matthew as a non-Jew? Yes. What do you do before you read the scriptures? Pray. 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 Amen. Whoa, that answer came from every corner of the room. Yes. <laughs> So, so Matthew has a connection with the Jewish people, but he has a connection with us because we are connected to our Jewish roots because Jesus was and is Jewish. So, now, one of the, one of the things that Mike commented on our earlier is it's a genealogy. I have to tell you, the scriptures are the number one bestseller all time, period. Not even close. And it starts with a genealogy. You think, that's a terrible way to start a book. But it's not a terrible way to start a book, because the Jews had to know that the Messiah was of the line of David. The Messiah could not be the Messiah unless he was from the line of David. So for the Jews, that's a perfect transition between Old Testament and New Testament. Mm -hmm. So the other thing that we, we find out about Matthew is that he spent a lot of time, a lot of ink, or whatever they used in those days, the Sermon on the Mount, the Charge of the Twelve, the Parables of the Kingdom, the Discourse on the Greatness and Forgiveness, 
the prophetic discourses in those chapters. So those are those are things that Matthew was concerned by the Holy Spirit to write about and and what he did. So it's the natural bridge. I just said that. So the second thing we'll talk about is my friend Luke. What do we know about Luke? He's a doctor. He's a doctor. What else do we know about him? Historian. He was a historian. World class historian, world class doctor. What else do we know about him? He traveled. He traveled with uh, Paul. He traveled with Paul. How do we know that he traveled with Paul? Because when he was writing stuff down, he would say, we. Like, Paul did this and Paul did that, and then we did this. The we means us, Luke and others. Uh, He's mentioned in Acts. He's mentioned that's right. In Acts, and, uh, Acts was that's right. written by Luke. That's right. Acts and Luke were written by Luke a world-class historian, mm -hmm. certainly not one of the 12, mm -hmm. maybe one of the 120, I don't know that for sure, mm -hmm. but a detailed historian. And often the, um, the people who criticize the Bible would say, well, Luke got it wrong. See, there's no, there's no city there, there's no governor there, and then they dig down deeper into archaeology and they find that Luke was spot on, and some of them even wrote uh, their next PhD on the fact that Luke got it right. <laughs> One of the arguments that people who don't want to acknowledge that the Bible is true, they will say, well, look, Luke calls, Luke says this is Lake the Senate, but Matthew calls it the Sea of Galilee, so therefore it can't be true. But out here, the road going perpendicular to Depot Street is known through the state as Route 28, but it's known by us as Main Street. Does I that mean that. it doesn't exist? Exactly. It's the same thing. So, the, the, early, the early church fathers believed that Luke wrote Luke. Amen. <laughs> like, Luke wrote Luke. So, all of you start off smarter than a whole bunch of people who have criticized the authority of Luke because Luke wrote Luke. Luke also wrote Acts. Um, so, it's astonishing how people want to not acknowledge the truth of the gospel and the resurrection by trying to attack the sources. Mm -hmm. That they want to attack the people who wrote, oh, he wasn't really Luke. Well, um, and the uh, commentary here talks about Luke not having a second name. Matthew had Matthew and Levi and others had. So now I'm going to tell you something radical. Um, Give me the next couple of verses, please, Kath. As you walk and the next along, one? You want both, uh, the next one, too? The next one. Colossians? Colossians, honey? Okay. And the, and the next one? Sorry, I must have given the wrong numbers. And the next one. Okay. Well, that one, okay, hold on. Let me just, um, well, so Okay. Yep, yeah, and then 14. And the next one? Yeah. Our dear friend Luke. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Our dear friend Luke sends his blessings. It's nice when your name is included in somebody's letter. I was... Uh, you know, Mike and Mike and I went to Mike and I say hi, or Mike and Mike and Josh say hi, uh, and then the next one. Fifteen um, or Timothy? You want Timothy? Say again. You want Timothy, or did you want fifteen? Only Luke 
is with me. Get Mark and bring him. So we find that Luke is with Paul. Keep going. Can, oh, excuse me. Can you go back to that? Because sure. That relates back to what um, Pastor was speaking about um, last week. Yes. Can you go back to the, the verse before this one right here, please? Mark. Okay, hold on. Uh, right there, he said, Get Mark, bring him, because he is helpful to me in my ministry. Yeah. And that's a conclusion to what was going on last week. Oh, that's right. And yeah. that's very important that we understand that and know that right here because last week has to coincide with this week right here. If it doesn't, then we're lost. Well, I, have I, have letter. I have a quick question. Are, because we don't have the book, so I'm just curious, are we studying Mark and then Matthew and then Luke, or how are we doing it? Yes, that's what we did. So and the reason you, and the reason for that is that some of the authors think that Mark published his work first and the others check their work against Mark's writing. So what I'm doing, because at home, we, me and a couple of other people, um, we're reading through the Gospel of Mark. So I'm just asking, are we studying the whole Gospel of Mark first? Yeah, that's first? what we're doing, too. We so doing what we're going to do... Does it go with different... Like, what we're, we're going to... What we've done in this lesson and in Pastor's lesson is just set you the baseline. This is who these guys are, these authors are. Okay. And in our, in our coursework here, we're going to cross them. What does this, how does this emphasize what this says, and how does this emphasize what this says? But reading Mark is a brilliant way to go because Mark is concise. Mark, Mark says it and puts a period there and goes on to say something else. So reading Mark, I absolutely encourage all of you to read all of the Gospels, but starting with Mark makes good sense. Well, the only reason why we started with Mark is because I thought that's what we were studying first. That's, to do the, yeah, to but, do the, so, and, yeah. and I, and I, I appreciate that, and I, I want you to study Mark. But we'll also get to study the other ones, and then we'll see. Because we'll be studying them across three books, we'll get a fuller picture of, this, of the accounts that the different writers give. Maybe I should wait until after the, the study. I'm sorry, say again. Maybe I should wait until after this. Because I'm, I'm taking this class, yes. but I'm also, it's overflowing into my home and other people that we're, we're reviewing stuff. So am I supposed to be going over, are we going to be studying all three different Gospels at the same time? Is what yes. yes. So we're going to be yeah. doing Mark and Matthew and Luke. That's mm -hmm. right. <laughs> and we're going to do, but, but study Mark, because... What this, what this class should do is help you to get a hunger to say, gee, I really want to study the Gospels. Yeah. And the more they study the Gospels, the more they make sense to you. Some of the people that I'm teaching, though, are going to make you... They're not, not everybody's on the same wavelength. That's not right. everybody's on the same learning um, curve. So right. I don't want to... I'm just going to speak for my... I can speak to my children. Um, if I'm going to teach something, it's going to be easier for me to teach. Some of my kids learn a certain way, some of my kids learn another way. So, mm -hmm. and I can't—I don't have all the hours of the day to teach three different kids three different ways. So I have to figure out if this is even going to benefit um, me to do this with my kids at home because I don't want to cause confusion. That's right. Um, we, we want you to study the scriptures together, and we love that you're studying Mark. I don't know how to say that better. Right. Yeah. Just, you just go with it until you get the book because it's really fine. Right. It'll work. It'll be just fine. And, and, and both. both I'm might. already confused. <laughs> I don't trust nobody. So I don't trust nobody. So trust me. I don't. I don't do that. That's not. No. What I'm saying is, I came prepared, and so did the rest of my crew. Come prepared to learn about whatever pastor was teaching last week. We thought we were picking up from where he left off. Mm -hmm. So it's yeah. completely well, different tonight. And, I, and I don't have the book in front of me to see what it is. That's, that's, yeah, that's I, cool. And I'm, I so apologize. That's what I'm asking. Is that what the book is doing? We're, so these two, these two lessons. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Can I look that? He's taking it home till next week. Now you have a book. Mm -hmm. um, thank you. So Mike and Linda have already done this, Mike. Uh, Maybe we should just go through Mark and forget the book. 
<laughs> and then, you know what I mean? It seems like that's what people are actually wanting to do. Okay, we can do that. And then go through Luke and go through Matthew. Like as a Sunday night. I don't want to confuse it, but. Right. So, actually, that's how I. So, let me finish what I was thinking about and finish talking about Luke, and then we'll, we'll, we'll spend a few minutes. On the first chapter of Mark, how does that sound? Well, it's, it's fine. I, it's alright. We'll just wait until we get the book to, do, to, to figure it out so we can keep. Okay. It's just hard to do it without the book in front of us. Some of us That's right. and some of us. But Linda was giving you the book, so if you want a book, take it home. Okay. Thank you. Linda and Mike took this already, and Rosie took it. I don't know a couple of years ago. So. <clears throat> So Luke is a noted historian. Luke wrote about the same time, 60 to 90, and um, he investigated stuff. He was a, a world-class historian and reporter. Now, how do you be a world-class historian? Well, you talk to the people. Hey, Mary, tell me how this happened. Hey, so... He, he investigated the details of the gospel and wrote us a book. And if you read Luke, it's some of the some of the cross passages are just so much more accurate. I mean, so much more detailed. Sorry, everything's accurate. But like Mark will give you a one, two sentence on something, and Luke will go on and on about it, and you go, "Whoa, that is so." I'm glad I read Mark. It gave me the baseline, but I'm glad that Luke expanded on it and Matthew did too. So, uh, sorry if I caused confusion. That wasn't my intention. My intention was to teach you... Go ahead. I'm sorry, I didn't realize. Without the book in front of me, I'm, I need to look at it. Like I'm a, like a visual person. So and, I'm trying to figure it out. So if I cause confusion, I'm sorry, I apologize. When I look at the book, I get it. I just want to make sure that everybody else that's connected to me is going to be able to understand. So I, I don't want them to. I absolutely them. understand your your point of view, and in fact, if I had written this book, it would be different. But I don't get to write books. And, uh, Amen. Amen. Uh, and, and by the way, thank God I don't write books because you'd be like. What is he doing? <laughs> In fact, when I write letters, I have Kathy check them so that my, my okay, what do you want to say? And I'll kind of, and she'll go, okay. Sometimes you have to move the whole para paragraph. <laughs> if you're writing something in length, yeah. you realize something else should have been before something else. Yeah. And so, that, so if you see things coming out of my, my emails or my writings, and you think, that's amazingly articulate, it's Kathy. Um, so I, I, I think big thoughts, and, and she figures out the details, and I go on to the next big thought, by the way, and she's like, wait a second, we've got to get, we get there. And so, so how, how amazing it is that these radically, three radically different people, wrote by the Holy Spirit, and never contradict each other, and give us these great, rich insights into these things. And uh, we study the three uh, synoptic gospels together because John, John was concerned about the Spirit led John to talk about a whole bunch of other things that the synoptics don't talk about. So if you're like, okay. So when you're when you're with somebody who's just starting to understand, just read through Mark, talk about it, and then when we come to a place of being more understanding, then we want to add add the information from the other gospels into it. Um, so I guess I, so Matthew's a tax collector gets saved, sanctified, and calls everybody to dinner to hear about Jesus. Luke is a doctor and a historian and a, and a world traveler with Paul, we'll find out. And 
he writes down the facts, just the facts, and he gets the facts right because it's important to him to get the facts right. And Mark, Mark compiles the Gospels in a very direct, straightforward way, without, without long paragraphs of, of, of explanations, just lays it right out. So it's glorious that the Holy Spirit led three different people from three different life experiences to write the three, three Gospels we're going to be talking about as time goes on. So thank you for your attention. And, uh, We've got it. Thank you for Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Matt. Thank you. Thank you. So you get the picture? Yeah. All we're doing the first couple of weeks, mm -hmm. going over who these people are. <laughs> now you have an idea, a little bit of an idea. If you want to go on the internet and look up each guy, each, each of those three guys, and find out what they did after they wrote the Gospels and where they went. And if you do that, you know, we Acts is just, you get Paul and you get a few other guys and uh, but you don't know what the rest of the apostles did. Because really, Acts only talks about just a handful of them. But all the rest of the apostles went off. Thomas, I believe Thomas possibly made it all the way to Japan with the gospel. He did go, definitely went to India. And, uh, you know, it is, it's amazing. They all gave their lives for God. And some of them went into the strangest places and were willing to do it for the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. I, I, do, cause, uh, I do have a book at home that is called the Synoptic uh, Gospel, uh, and it, it has, as it's going through um, time-wise, do you know what I mean? Like from the birth of Christ, it will start with the birth of Christ, and it will have three columns. Mark's column will probably be empty. Because <laughs> he really doesn't talk about the birth of Christ. <laughs> but Luke and Matthew do, you know? And so it, it goes like that in chronological order through, through the book. Uh, uh, it's, it's a good one to have to go through it so that that would make it easier for you to present as well. I, I'll give you a copy of that. Amen. Well, it's wonderful to be in the house of the Lord tonight. Oh, and we're learning, you know, we're learning who these people are, what they did, and, uh, and then through them, we're going to look at Jesus Christ through their eyes. Amen. Lord, we just uh, ask that you continue to work in us and grow us in your word. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The splendor of the King is called the Majesty. But all the earth rejoices. But all the earth rejoices. He rides. Himself in light, darkness tries to hide, and trembles at his voice, and trembles at his voice. How great is our God! See with me. Son, the 
Sunday church and then I haven't gotten word back uh, from Laura and, and brother Mark Donald as to when they were going to have some kind of morning prayer for uh, just for the nation she told me yesterday okay you know I believe she wants to have prayer every morning starting when he comes here yeah I, I do you know do you have a time that, that pastor Matt is upstairs in the morning yeah, that's okay. So what I'm saying is they'll probably have prayer down here. Yeah. Uh, probably quietly down here. Uh, but you don't know the time? I do not know the okay. time. Okay. Okay, um, so we can't get that I'm to sure you. I'm sure Laura or I'm sure my <laughs> wife can find out from Pastor McDonald. Yeah. Or I have his phone number. I could ask him myself. Thank you, brother. Amen. And so other oh, than brother that... Todd, brother Todd has his phone number too. So yeah. Brother yeah. Todd could... Uh, find out when the prayer is here in the morning and starting when. Okay, and we'll but we'll buzz it out, and then um, Friday evening he will be here um, at six o'clock. 
have a regular worship, and it, it will not be your usual Shabbat evening. So it will be uh, whatever he wants to do. He's our guest. So whatever he wants to do on Friday evening, that's what he will do. And then he will be with us also on Sunday morning. Amen. Mm -hmm. And then next Sunday evening, I will be teaching about... Because <laughs> I don't have the book. Um, the, 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 the historical background of the Gospels. Da, 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 da. And you all love history. Oh, yeah. And you will like it the way you will like it. I will make you like it. <laughs> Amen. So you're getting all this background. I hope you don't mind. All right. The Lord bless you and keep you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.